All right, so you might be asking yourself how we're going to do this immersion process. Um, so let's start to take a look at some of the uh, concepts that we need to be engaged in before we can really start to embrace the idea of immersion journalism. One of the first things I need you to really start to recognize is this uh, statement by Catherine Lanfear talking about stories, that they are the connective tissue of the human race, and at the heart of every issue is a human element that leads to the three most beautiful words in the English language, what happened next. And if you can answer that question, you are a storyteller. And that's really what we're looking to do here with our technique, is to um, be able to share a, a story, a human story, by looking at what happens. What happens in the near term? What happens in the long term? What are all different sides of this particular uh, scenario? How does it play out? And by depicting the way that it plays out is going to show us the ultimate in storytelling. So remember that the thing that separates this from some of the more conventional journalism that you've done thus far is your uh, need, your desire, your intention to really inhabit this story, that you need to be uh, spending time infiltrating the story to become um, so comfortable within the framework of the story taking place that the characters themselves barely recognize that you're there, that you're just part of what happens, and your ability to chronicle what's happening objectively, fairly, representatively, um, also with real emotion and, and character development and, and really to kind of view yourself as a conduit for what's happening in front of you in order to get it to the reader. Um, we're going to really start to look at how we can incorporate timelines to organize our characters and, and the different plots that they're going to be undergoing. Really, uh, one of the key ways to look at this might be like a funnel. So if you think about uh, you're going to have some idea for a story, and we're going to talk at great length about um, how you develop your, your community and where this idea will come from. But basically, you're, it's okay to start with a really unformed and fuzzy idea. And, and think of it like you're just, you're just dumping it right into a funnel. You're, you're throwing everything in there. And then you're letting it swirl around and, and kind of figure out what's going to make it through um, to get to... Uh, to filtered out to become the story that you want to tell. So, you know, if you have a community in mind, um, you know, let's think of a community um, that, that you might be considering uh, related to musicians. You know, that's a really broad term, musicians. Um, what is it that you, you're really thinking about? Well, you know, you met this one musician who um, runs a coffee shop and he's trying to make it big and he's, uh, you know, works at this coffee shop during the day and he plays gigs at night and, um, you know, he's taking care of his, his a single parent and he's to, and I'm totally making this up but but he's taking care of a, a young child or someone who's elementary school so you start to kind of swirl all this around and you start to figure out what is the story that you want to tell and how can you tell that story that experience through your own immersive uh, path with this particular subject what is it that you want the reader to know is still fundamental to these stories but now you're going to let them know that by providing them this completely immersive experience that you're going to endure for them and then share it with them. The key that you need to focus on right away is um, what exactly is worthy of narrative? Um, you know, what is conventional and can it be viewed unconventionally? Um, if you, everybody uh, knows someone quite likely who's a parent, at the very least, you know, you know your parents, um, does that make them worthy of uh, this kind of immersive semester-long project? Maybe, maybe not. It really depends on what else is going on uh, circumstantially that contributes to their um, their parenting, their lifestyle, how can you make it experiential for the reader is really the key and what is unfolding from an action standpoint. So if you are uh, you know, looking to do a piece on a student, uh, you know, you, we certainly know plenty of them, and you're going to uh, follow the student to class, and you're going to follow the student to um, her sorority, and you're going to follow the student while she works out at the RPAC, uh, the Ohio State you know, Rec Center, um, where's, the, where's the narration? Where is the reader going to go? Why does the reader um, feel like this is something that's 
fulfilling their desire to know. Um, and I'm not seeing that yet, but that's not saying that that story doesn't exist. So we have to look at something, again, this unfolding action, um, something that, that hopefully is finite, that has an expected resolution to it. We don't necessarily want to leave our story hanging at the very end. Um, and, and the key component here is you have to have access to the subject and the community that you want to be working with. And it can't be, you will give you access for a day or two, or we'll give you access for a week. You have to be immersed for the semester. So you have to find a person, an entity, um, an opportunity that will allow you to become part of it for the foreseeable future. And these are the questions that you're going to start to ask yourself as, as this idea starts to mull around, as it, it starts to enter into your, your funnel. Um, what's the big idea exactly? What is it that you're going to want readers to know or consumers of this project to know in the end? Um, will I have access to all aspects of this person or this, this entity's life, this, these experiences that are going to take place? Do we have some idea of what's going to happen? Will it be something that will be compelling enough to sustain a narrative? Um, what exactly is important? Is it the place? Is it the action? Is it the person? Um, what kind of interaction do you anticipate between your character and other characters? What do you want to tell the story um, around? Is it one scene, a whole day, a period of time? How do you foresee the story taking place? And do you anticipate that these characters are going to have some sort of epiphany, that they will um, change in some way? There'll be some sort of transformation. That's really what we're going to be looking for. So these are some of the elements uh, we need to be thinking about. Is this going to intrigue the reader? Uh, I cannot stress the need for access enough. Um, you know, even when we do conventional reporting, access can be a challenge, and, and you have to be wide open with your subjects now and let them know how much access you're going to require. Um, make sure about this unfolding action, that you have characters, and, and you're really looking at your character's emotional growth. Um, and, and you're your own emotional growth is going to come into play here, but we want to make sure that the character is undergoing some sort of transformation uh, that, that we can see and experience with them. So let's start researching. We really need to start digging deep and, and figuring out what is the story you want to tell, who do you want to spend the semester with. Um, we're going to start to draft your story idea and, and figure out what this community will do for you, for the readers, crystallize the, the concept, the idea, the theme of this, um, You know, develop the, the structure that in, in which you envision this project taking place and how you're going to be able to paint this picture with words, with the multimedia tools that you have at your disposal. All of these things are going to come into play as we determine the community that we want to pursue.